Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime with me, Kamal Kaur. Today I'm going to read you the story of our 8th Guru, Guru Hakrishanji. Guru Hakrishanji was born on the 7th of July, 1656. When he was just 5 years old, he became our Guru. And he died in 1664 at the age of 8. However, in such a short time frame, he left such a huge mark on Sikh history. Guru Krishanji was the son of Guru Haraiji. When Guru Haraiji looked at his face when he was born, he felt that his son could be his true successor. When the family priest came to bless the newborn, after much consultation, the boy was called Hakrishan. Hakrishanji's father was very fond of hunting, but never killed any animals. Her Krishanji loved being with animals and spent hours tending to them. He had a really soft heart and would get really upset if someone got hurt. He couldn't bear to see anyone in pain. Her Krishanji's friends doted on him. They never played without him. And if he didn't feel like playing, they would sit and listen to him sing. Guru Her Krishanji had a melodious voice and he liked singing devotional hymns. He was also very extremely serious and deeply spiritual. Guru Haraiji's devotees often gathered around her Krishan to hear him recite verses from the Holy Granth. In his voice, the holy hymns sounded so simple and yet so enchanting that people touched his feet. Guru Haraiji found it strange that such a small child could inspire such feelings and reactions in other people. He often wondered whether her Christian would succeed him. It was not long before events decided who the next guru would be. The story of Ram Rai's supposed treachery in the Mughal court has been mentioned before. The Sikh community was so shocked by Ram Rai's way. So deep was Guru Haraiji's grief that he refused to speak to anyone for a few days. Her Christian, who was only five, was really upset seeing his dad so sad. He took his father's place during the morning prayers and sang devotional hymns. His voice was so captivating that devotees forgot the absence of their guru. When the guru came out of seclusion, he disowned Ram Rai from the family and community. He was not only hurt, but ashamed of what he had done, and he hoped that the next guru would remove that blemish. The Guru announced that he was appointing his younger son, her Christian, as the next Guru. The devotees were pleased with his choice. They were very fond of her Krishanji and admired and respected him. Guru her Krishanji took over as a spiritual leader of the Sikhs after his father died. He travelled for the propagation of his religion. Due to his young age, people often doubted his wisdom. Once an elderly businessman asked him to elaborate on a shaloka from the Gita. The young guru silenced his detractors by making a child younger than him explain the meaning. Ram Rai was furious when he learned that his father had appointed his younger brother as the next guru. He was distressed because he was not only deprived of the guru, but even of his father's vast property and wealth, which was also given to Guru Her Krishanji. He complained to Aurangzeb and implored him to help him get his due share. Knowing that Guru Haraiji had instructed Her Krishan never to meet Aurangzeb, Ram Rai begged the emperor to summon Guru Her Krishanji to his court. Aurangzeb asked the senior official Raja Jai Singh to ask Guru Her Krishanji to visit Delhi. Raja Jai Singh was regarded to be close to the Sikh Gurus. He was also aware of the promise that Guru Hakrishanji had made to his father, hence decided to inform the Guru about his dilemma. So the next morning, Raja Jai Singh sent his most trusted servant with the royal summons, along with a letter explaining everything. Guru Hakrishanji understood Raja Jai Singh's predicament when he received the royal summons and he read the letter. He called his father and the Sikhs for a meeting and discussed the issue. The Sikhs realised that the royal summons was Ram Rai's doing. 
Unable to come to any conclusion, the Guru wondered what his father would have done in such a circumstance. He felt that Guru Hairaji wouldn't have disappointed somebody when they came asking for help. With this, he was clear about his course of action. He decided to accept Raja Jai Singh's request and go to Delhi. Guru Hakrishnanji set out to Delhi along with his family to fulfill desires of the Sikh Sangat. Hearing the news, the Sikhs in Delhi were thrilled. They longed to meet the Guru but had given up hope because of the might of the Mughals. As word spread, Sikhs from various places joined him at different stages of their journey. They wanted to catch a glimpse of him and pay their respects. Before long, the crowd grew so large that the Guru realised that he would never get to Delhi. Deciding not to take anyone but his family with him, he advised his devotees not to follow him. Guru Hakrishnji was greatly touched by people's devotion. Raja Jai Singh welcomed the Guru and requested him to stay in his house, which then on came to be known as Bangla Sab. Raja Jai Singh opened the door to his palace and instructed the guards to allow anyone in who wanted to pay homage to the Guru. Around that time, an epidemic broke out in Delhi. Thousands of people were struck down by smallpox that had spread across the city. Many people afflicted by it were brought to the Guru for his blessing. On being cured, the Sikhs begged the Guru to allow them to devote their lives to him. Soon the epidemic subsided and the people started recovering. The devotion the people had for the Guru and the powerful influences he wielded on his devotees amazed the Rangzib. He was so surprised at the Guru's handling of the situation. He became, he became convinced of Guru Hakrishanji's extraordinary powers. He was very keen to meet the Guru but had received no invitation from him. So Aurangzeb decided to send his son to meet Guru Hakrishnji. He also asked him to he also asked him to discuss the complaints of Ram Rai. Guru Hakrishnji welcomed the Mughal prince gracefully. He was pleased to see that by sending his son, Aurangzeb had not tried to impose his presence on him. Sitting before the Guru, the Mughal prince realized that despite his age, he was indeed very wise and a man of God. When the Guru asked the purpose of his visit, the prince told him of Ram Rai's complaints. Guru Hakrishnji replied firmly that a throne was not the personal property to be handed down. It was a responsibility that would only be passed to people who deserved it, but also had the capacity to fulfil it in the best possible way. In any case, the Guru told the prince that such conflicts were internal issues of the Sikhs. They could solve it themselves and it was not fair for the emperor to interfere. The Mughal prince was so impressed by Guru Hakrishanji's wisdom and by the firm yet polite manner in which the Guru had made his point clear. Aurangzeb had not expected an eight-year-old to speak so clearly and wisely. More than that, he was amazed at the boldness of the Guru, who stated his opinion so fearlessly and without being afraid of the consequences. The Emperor declared that Guru Hakrishnji was deservedly made the Guru and Ram Rai's claims were invalid. He also sent a message to the Guru through Raja Jai Singh that he was also free now to go back to his town and he made other gestures of goodwill too. Guru Hakrishnji met with every one of his devotees all the time. He was tired, he was weak, he was exhausted, but very content. However, this took his toll and he soon caught the smallpox disease himself. His condition deteriorated and before long, he found it difficult to speak. Raja Jai Singh asked Guru Hakrishnji to rush back to Giratpur, but the Guru refused. The Guru realised that his condition was worsening every day. 
At this point, a Sikh named Gurubaksh told him that all Sikh Gurus appointed a Guru who led the Sikhs forward, but he had not designated anyone to guide them spiritually. The Guru shook his head and gestured with exhaustion that it was God's will that he was dying. His voice was faint, almost inaudible. He whispered that there was no need to fear because the flame of Guru Nanak Dev Ji would never die down. When asked who the next Guru would be, Guru Hakrishan Ji could only utter Baba Bakale before he closed his eyes forever. Bangla Sahib Gurdwara was built to commemorate the child Guru. Shri Hakrishan Tehaya Jistite Sabduk Jai means by meditating on Sri Guru Hakrishan Ji, pain and sorrows are removed from our lives. We have to remember Guru Hakrishan Ji's story every time we're going through anything, any pain or sorrow, the Guru Ji takes our pain away and he gives us back our happiness and our joy. Let's remember that before we all go to sleep tonight. Hope you enjoyed the story of Guru Hakrishan Ji. Satnamai.